ladies and gentlemen. Le Tonky Noir. Uh, obviously, I'm not applying this in ideal conditions, however. In the summer, I will uh, go over the varnishing again. What I want is just at least one coat. One coat of protection on the cabin before I launch. Now having used this a little bit on the fore hatch and things, I can say already, incidentally this was recommended to me by one of my subscribers, SV Aphrodite said give this a shot. He said he's been using it and he's impressed with it. And I have to say I can see why. It stays wet for long enough to go back even 10 minutes after you've put the coat on and tip it off if you want to, or clear up any runs. So it doesn't go off anything like as fast as epiphanes. It needs no thinning. And it's generally, it seems so far anyway, a bit less fussy. So this has had penetrating epoxy on it, as you'll be aware. Washed it, sanded it, wiped it down with white spirit. Checked it. <laughs> checked it again. Triple checked it. And now I'm just putting this first coat of varnish on, which, I mean, by now, if this had been Epiphanes, going back to where I started uh, would be potentially problematic. It, it would have started to just skin up, probably. I mean, of course, skin over. <laughs> you don't skin up on the boat. Look at that, look. It's very easy. I'm quite confident there'll be no runs in that. Nice. Let's see how it turns out. So I'm just loading the boat now for another gripping adventure down the boat tomorrow. Uh, loading the car, in fact, not the boat. Um, I just thought I'd insert this little intermission. The videos, the last video, this one, and probably the next one, they're a little bit mix and match. It's because they're filmed over several days. Uh, and what I'm trying to do really is capture the insane run up to the launch. Um, so you've got that to look forward to. <laughs> there you are. Okay, so work started at 4am this morning and it's finished now, it's 1 in the afternoon. I'm just going to come and do some epoxying on the boat because it's going to be dry enough today to do it and tomorrow there's other stuff that I want to do. Uh, when this cracked, it's epoxied to a strut under there to brace it. Um, in the summer heat when this, this cracked, it sounded like a bullet had hit the boat. It, I jumped out of my bunk, it was absolutely amazing. Um, what I'm gonna do is just try and plane that a little bit flat so that the router doesn't uh, so the router can lay flat, you know? This bit of wood, which I've tapered, this Dutchman here. I need to go. Wow, probably back to there. Okay, never a pencil when you want one, is there? Really short time today, so I've got to get back home. Exactly like that. Obviously, it's not sitting far enough down into there. Um, but there is something I can do about that. That fits in there exactly. And the crack is actually full thickness, but there it's dry. Well, you can see where it's damp, but right down the middle of that crack and a good, good distance past it. Uh, and there's my tapered fillet piece. Sanding and some more varnish. So I'm just going to let that soak in for a minute. It won't be long, really, probably half an hour, and I'll be able to get another little bit on there just to get it to soak into the new wood. 
it won't be a pucker varnish job but when, it, when I come to doing that it'll probably be summer or at least spring and I'll sand the whole thing and varnish it so while I'm up here the old Latonk worked out alright didn't it I mean it's by no means a great finish but it wasn't supposed to be you know it's just supposed to get a finish on it so it looks wood and shiny that's it um, this is certainly not the perfect conditions for doing varnishing it needs to be warmer weather guaranteed dry weather um, but that'll be something I can enjoy doing at the mooring later on in the year hmm. today one of the things I'm here for is this so you may be able to see yeah, all along here along this seam it's, it doesn't look particularly damp but in this corner here you may not be able to see it there is a tiny gap there that tiny gap I believe that the Tonkin wire is nice it's going to be a nice colour isn't it that tiny gap I believe is um, causing a bit of a leak in a cabin now many of you now be going oh I'll just run some varnish into it I run about half a pint of varnish into that and just keep soaking it up before that I tried putting uh, epoxy in there and just keep soaking it up so I've got to do something a little bit more adventurous I'm going to get my oscillating tool and I'm going to cut a groove all the way along there so that I can fill some epoxy in there put some epoxy filler in uh, just to close that up the groove itself will be like two millimeters not big I could just squidge a bit of epoxy on top of that but that wood will be damp there so the epoxy won't take very well um, the oscillating tool will heat it up suitably I might go over it with a hot air gun after that just to make sure then I'll cover it with cling film and duct tape to keep the rain off and the damp out uh, and by the time I come down tomorrow that problem will have gone away which initially I'm just going to work in there and then I'm going to smooth it off with my finger and it will be hardly noticeable because this should not be leaking now in fact the point of this mission was that it shouldn't be leaking so if I go back in the water and it is leaking I am not going to be a happy bunny not at all what I may do in disgust is just fiberglass over the whole poxy thing and I think you'll agree that is a fairly tidy job cling film is your friend it'll keep the damp off it'll keep the rain off until that uh, that goes off perfect do the other side well it's another pissy rainy day on Ronquetta however uh, I've come aboard this morning and discovered that there are no leaks and it's been hammering down with rain all night so I think I think that's what I think I've won with that one completely dry no wet patch on the bunk no water under there I mean logically when you think about it the only place that water could have been leaking in is the cutout around the windows but you know logically it shouldn't be leaking at all now and now of course it isn't uh, so it looks like what I did yesterday worked the forepeak of course is bone dry and that's a really good thing most people have a leaky forehatch but I don't just luck of course you know I have lost so much work time to bad weather this this year it is amazing what I've got done what I have got done um, today I managed to snatch half a morning and it is pissing down with rain and of course the jobs that I've got left to do now are painting jobs, so deck paint and obviously varnishing. On the basis that last night, as well as all this, my bandsaw died. The shaft in the middle of the, sh of the motor sheared off. It's dead. I think sometimes you have to take, uh, take the message from the heavens and just say, okay, time to stop now. I feel a bit like one of those natural history programmes where one of the troop of monkeys dies and all the other monkeys gather around and brush flies from its face, you know.
goodbye, Tarquin. Rest in peace. So today I'm going to tidy up. The next time I come down the boat, I'm going to do little things like fitting cleats. And do it tidy up, and I'm going to try and get some deck paint on it before I launch. But other than that, I think I'm done. The list of the things that I've done uh, this year is phenomenal, really. So I shouldn't be unhappy with it. I'm a little bit annoyed that uh, the weather will not give me a break. Anyway, that's it for this time. Next time I'm going to be bending on the sails, hopefully doing a bit of deck painting. Not in that order. Maybe in that order. Um, and making sure that all the running rigging is uh, good to go because launch day is coming.